I don't need to act like I have so much money, but bro, I'm not being sponsored. This is coming out of my pocket. I'm not afraid of anybody here. If I want to say anything, I look like I want to use my ads, I will use my ads. If I want to solve anybody, I will solve you directly and nothing will happen. So you had a good time in Cape Town. I enjoyed myself. You had, you had a lot of fun with Fina as well. Good memories is everybody. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, Deji was not on the set tonight, but according to Ebuka, Deji is going to definitely appear somehow. Now, I'm guessing that um, at the time of the shoot, Deji was not in the country because I actually saw a clip where Deji was um, being spoken to via a screen. Yes, but guys, I'm quite eager to get to that Tichi and J Deji's part because some clips that the production team has been releasing this week, oh my God, it's been insane. <laughs> And I cannot wait to get to the bottom of those two people's conversation. But now, quickly moving on to the whole Fina and Groovy conversation. Wow. Oh, my God. You know, never ever did I think that a time will come when Fina and Groovy will look like sworn enemies, you know, sharing the same space on that set. Guys, the, the, the beef between those two people. The, I mean, from here, I could literally feel it. Yes, I could feel it. Fina could not even look up to the cameras. Yes, the look I could sense from that girl's face, the look I could see from her face, it was like self-judgment. It was like shame. Because think about it. How did Fina get groovy, guys? The story is long. Mm -hmm. And mind you, Fina did not have groovy at the initial stage. Whilst the show was still on, there was first beauty and then there was a labor around the corner somewhere and then there was also a bestie at the time in the house amaka which was more like the foundation for the issues that she had with amaka on and off the show so look at it this way because of a man you had issues with your fellow women and now at the end of the day this guy Pink hair turned to black hair, glory to God, because that pink hair was always giving me cringe vibes, yes. So pink hair now turned to black, in other words, a transitioning from being a player player small boy into a confident and emboldened man. This guy is literally categorizing you as people. People, because Ibuka was asking these housemates, oh, did you enjoy Cape Town? Did you enjoy the trip? What was going on between you and Fina? And Groovy was talking about how he enjoyed his time with a lot of people, with other people, with everybody. <laughs> I mean, guys, you could tell that Vida looked like she was really ashamed of herself at that point in time. And guys, I'm going to be frank with you. I kind of felt like she needed to feel that way. Yeah. Because now reality is dawning on her that, hey, girl, even though you were playing a game back then in the house, hey, this is what it actually looks like in reality how you got to that point with groovy kind of looked like she was angry that ebuka was probing with his questions and she kind of came off as a bit rude when she kept on telling ebuka that's it that's it and i'm like girl calm down nobody forced you to get into what you got into with groovy so calm down it is not ebuka's fault that it did not work out between you and groovy at the time so calm down which one is that's it that's it. <laughs> it. It wasn't it. The time you people were doing your lovey lovey up and down on social media. I beg. Anyways, Adekole's newsletter was a major conversation tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And in as much as I kind of like Adekole a lot, I even, you know, secretly gave him my support whilst the show was still on. I was also really disappointed, you know, tonight that he did not own up to his sentiments. Because, guys, frankly speaking, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Adekunle feeling the way he felt during that Cape Town trip and deciding to write a newsletter about it. Absolutely nothing wrong. For me, I give much respect to people who put their shit out there and then they still own up to it. The thing that made you write that letter in the first place, you need to own up to it at the end of the day. Otherwise, you'll be seen as a coward. And frankly speaking, in my frank opinion, it, it was quite sad to see Adekunle responding like a coward. And then him talking about, oh, I, I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm going to say what I want to say. I'm going to use my ad, blah, blah, blah. I felt like, nah, Adekunle, right now, you just literally dug your own grave on social media. You just literally opened the ground and, you know, brought a lot of shit about yourself. Because, dude, the reason people liked you in the first place is your audacity. The reason people loved you whilst the show was still on is the fact that, in the midst of all of the boot leaking that was going on on the show, you were the only one that was able to stand up to Shags. So if you were feeling a certain way about what was going on in Cape Town and you wrote about it, there's absolutely nothing wrong about it because that is actually your feelings and your feelings are valid. 
Yes. So apparently, how the whole newsletter thing even came up self was the fact that a lot of things were happening. And we saw that yesterday during the introduction of the reunion show where Adekunle had mentioned during one of his confessionals that he felt like he was all over again in Big Brother's house in the game. You know, that there's just so much unnecessary tension and pressure. For him to have said that, then it means that there were actually things that his fellow housemates were doing that did not all go well with him. It means that there were actually things that was happening that he felt was quite hypocritical. So if he was saying what he was saying, dude, you could have as well used your act. Yes, and that was the point where I supported Elo Swags, that yeah, if you have things to say to your fellow housemates, it's either you say it to them right there in person, or then you're taking it to social media, but then if you're gonna take it to social media, man, use your art. Shags said that he bought his Azu on a low key, and that's fine. Anybody, absolutely anybody, can choose to spend their money however way they want to spend it. And frankly speaking, guys, I think that whatever Adekunle said in his newsletter referring to the whole, or oh, whatever your faves are spending is funded or sponsored by Pepsi, blah, blah, blah. I think it was actual shades. Yeah. Whether he chose to accept it or not. Guys, I think it was actual shades. Now, he was talking about, oh, live streams. His fans were, you know, pressurizing him to go on lives. Hence the reason he said he was not going to be going on lives. He said he was not referring to people. And according to the gist at the time, they said that it was actually Elo Swags that was constantly going on lives. Yes, I remember those days. Elo Swags was always annoyingly going on lives. Yes, I understand that one. But then, talking about the whole Hazu situation, Adekunle said he did not even know that Shags had bought Azu because they were on opposites you know, areas or sections of the club. And it was the first or one of the first persons to leave the club that night. So he didn't even know what was going on. Now, Bella, of course, stepped in to defend her man. According to Bella, she felt like it was actual shades. Yes, that if Adekunle had anything to say, he would have at least come to them to say it other than going on to social media. And the reason she did not address it with him is because she felt like, well, you said it on social media, then we're going to address it there on social media. And frankly speaking, for the first time, I kind of saw sense in what Bella said, even though for the whole duration of the show, Bella never really understood anything. <laughs> but for the first time, miraculously, glory be to God, Bella had understanding and I was quite impressed. So, frankly speaking, even though Adekunle kept on claiming tonight that he was not referring to anybody with that newsletter, ladies and gentlemen, it kind of felt like it was shots fired at different people and the people who caught the shade yes they were catching the shade because they were all at the same place at that point in time um the same place meaning cape town yes they were sharing similar experiences so it was quite natural for certain people to catch the shade yes so adequately my love doesn't make my love for you reduce at all but i'm just saying that dude when you put things out there, own it with your full chest. Because at the end of the day, your feelings have value. Nobody's going to kill you for feeling what you feel. All right? Now, quickly moving on to another very interesting drama of the night. Tom Savvy and Elo Swag's beef about Elo Swag's um, nominating Fam Savvy for eviction, which led to, that's for nomination, which led to um, Fam Savvy's eviction from the show. Now, I understand where Fam Savvy is coming from. I mean, something similar like that happened of Big Brother Titans where um what's his name now um ugh, what's that guy's name the one that wore Votron outfit in the fine in the finals Kanaga Jr. yeah <laughs> when Kanaga Jr. had actually nominated the Maya pair um his very very good friend Marvin and um Yaya Yaya yes Yaya so I understand yes I mean fans of has every right to be upset because according to him he and Elo Swags, they're like brothers. I think they actually stayed together in confinement or in, um, in lockdown before this show. So I totally understand it. But then what I did not get is, dude, I don't understand. Are you waiting for Jesus to come and beg you? Because according to Elo Swag, his mom reached out to Fam Savvy. His mother, like, his mom reached out to Fam Savvy. And then an A-list actor, according to Ellis Wags, was the one that tried to help them resolve the issue. And then still on the reunion show, Fam Savvy was still saying that he can never be friends with Elo Swags because he does not trust Elo Swags anymore. And then I was wondering like, okay, Fam Savvy, now you are losing me, bro. Now you're losing me. I'm confused. These people have apologized. 
and you are still feeling pain. And guys, you know what's even pissing me off? Because in as much as we need to take his sentiments, his feelings into considerations, because of course his feelings are valid, I'm thinking, bro, hold up a second, hold up a second. Let me get this straight. When you auditioned for Big Brother Niger, did you not know that you were going to nominate people and equally be nominated as well? So why are you taking it so deep? I mean, at the end of the day, were you expecting Elo Swags, if he had the power to take it to finals, so that you, you would go and win? All because of bromance. Back shift. <laughs> that was the Derry and Sife's situation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I felt like that conversation is not over yet. Yeah, it's not over. Ebuka touched on it. I love the way Ebuka touched on it, but I still feel like there's a lot to be said because Sife did not really say much. I want to know how Sife really feels. Yes, of course, Doni apologized to Sife about the way she had portrayed him in a negative life, um, in a negative light, even went as far as, in a way, body shaming his physical looks, right, um, to Deji. That was the time when she was making her moves, shooting her shots, you know, at Deji, and Deji kept on rejecting her. We understand. We saw what happened in the house just because she wanted to um, get Deji, she kept on throwing Sife under the bus over and over again. Now, according to her, they had talked and she had apologized. But I feel like that conversation is not over. Mm -mm. It's not over because there's still the Shags conversation. Mm, there's still Shags in that mix. The doing triangle or whatever is not over. So, Ebuka, I hope that you people actually revisited that doing relationship issues in the house and then there was the brian and diana's conversation now guys i don't know if you all recall back when the show was still on when brian started showing interest in diana you know and it was quite hilarious to me at the time because i felt like bro like you're a small boy i'm sorry guys not like small boy in every way but you are still young diana is actually older than you so what's what exactly is your motive what's your intention is it about the game and i found it quite annoying you know the way brian kept on laughing and saying i joke a lot i joke a lot i'm like brian you don't joke a lot in the guise of you joke a lot you say a lot of things, you do a lot of nasty things, and then you try to get away with it. You don't joke a lot. I don't take people that say, I joke a lot. I don't take them serious. Yes. And that was exactly what Brian did a lot in the house, talking about, I joke a lot, I joke a lot. And then he was stepping on toes, being verbally abusive sometimes to some of his fellow female housemates. He was just very, very, you know, it was just disgusting. So him laughing tonight and talking about, I joke a lot, I didn't find it fresh. I didn't find it... I didn't find it funny at all. So scratch that. And then finally, finally, Giddy Fire and his wives, Diana and Amaka. Ladies and gentlemen, the highlight of that whole conversation for me, because Diana was saying a lot. Amaka was saying a lot. Giddy Fire was feeling like the chief CEO of the section, right? And as far as the many things that they were saying, the highlight for me was Diana telling Amaka, I don't want to expose you, but I'm just saying. And I'm like, <laughs> but girl, <laughs> you ended up exposing Amaka. Because ladies and gentlemen, at the time of the show, we did not really know that Amaka had actually been asking Diana about most of the guys in the level one house. Yes, I think at some point we kind of got a clue, but what we kind of saw most of the time was Amaka asking Diana about Giddy Fire. And let's be frank about it. Diana really messed up herself in the house at the time. She really messed up herself because she kept on saying and giving the impression that she did not have a thing. But Giddy Fire, that they were just friends. Giddy Fire was like her younger brother. But she was kind of possessive. She did not want the guy to be free. And Giddy Fire, on the other hand, wanted to play a game. He saw people being in ships and relationships and all whatnot. And he wanted to be a part of that mix. And Mako, on the other hand, came into the house with an agenda to play, to catch crews, to, you know, be a player, player, or whatever, be in a relationship. At the end of the day, everybody's head just jumped together. Bam. <laughs> Yeah, so I found it quite hilarious the way they were just going on and on and on about it. But then sadly, production decided to end this particular episode unceremoniously and it was quite sad. I found it offensive because people should not try it again. But anyways, guys, I'm looking forward to tomorrow's episode. I cannot wait for the many drama that's about to unfold. So far... I am absolutely enjoying the reunion show, but I don't know about you. So just go ahead and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. Have an amazing night.